Now, we tend to think of seagulls just being by the seaside. The clue is in the name after all, but they are increasingly venturing inland and can cause all sorts of problems. A new licensing regime was introduced last year by Natural England, which meant local authorities have to submit an application for a license to deal with urban seagulls, making it harder to control numbers. Joining me now is Vera Hophouse, Liberal Democrat MP for Bath, and her constituent, Tim Newark. Welcome to the show, both of you. Nice to see you. Thank you. Um, Hello. Thank you. Tim, how did you end up working with, with Vera? This is a sort of item that we do each week called Constituent Surgeries, where we explore the work that MPs and their constituents can do together. So tell me how you came to work together, Tim. Well, it, well the fact was that Natural England had um, just was not responding to the concerns of Bath residents and their councillors, who, who, would, who you'd have thought would be the people to talk to government. But Natural England just weren't responding. They didn't take seriously our concerns. We were woken up at five o'clock every, every morning by the screeching of gulls and the mess they leave. So I was very thankful when uh, Vera got involved and spoke to the DEFRA minister. Vera, um, over to you. Tell me what sort of um, dangers, I, I guess, that seagulls can present to your constituents. I was reading that they can attack people and pets. Just explain the cases that you have come across. Well, the main problem is um, that seagulls are um, you know, competing ultimately with humans over food and habitat. Um, and while we respect wildlife, and uh, Tim does that too, it has to be the right balance between human interests and um, the interest of protecting wildlife. So they are very noisy birds. Uh, if you live in central Bath, uh, you will know that the seagulls will wake you up, particularly in the summer, every morning. Uh, they take your food if they, if they fancy it. Um, they, their fecus is actually dangerous, particularly to children, if um, it is lands in the garden on their toys and so on and so forth. So it's a, a really considerable public health issue here. And while um, Bethonians have learned to live with gulls, they're there, and in many other cities, the gulls are there too. The new licensing regime has meant uh, that really the gull population is even increasing even further. And at some point, a natural England need, needed to listen. And Tim was a, a, a very active constituent who just didn't let go. Uh, so th these sort of things always work in partnership. And, and Vera, you, you talk about the need to strike the right balance when it comes to seagulls. What is the right balance in your view? I'll ask the same question to you, Tim, after. Well, I, I certainly think... That, that, that now the, the balance is completely wrong uh, because um, the destruction of nests, which is the only way how we can control urban gal population, is is now almost impossible. Uh, so I think the council had the ability to destroy just under two handfuls of, or if that, um, nests. Previously, it was well over 100. Uh, in fact, the, the council always has to go back to the same sites because they're quite persistent, these birds, they go back. Um, so basically, the council could do almost nothing. Uh, and that is just simply not good enough. Um, the control of urban gulls has to be effective enough to keep the population, while well, certainly not growing, as much as it, it currently does. And Tim, do you have anything to add to what Vera has just said on that? Yes, I, th I think Vera's right that the uh, balance is completely wrong now, that Gallus have more rights than the people living in Bath. Uh, so I think it's very important that the residents work with the council, which is what is starting now, to protect our roof, our roof spaces from nesting gulls with netting and spikes. Uh, and to just get the balance right. I mean, there's no, I mean, it seems natural England, if we don't like it, they say we should, we should move. But I, I don't think it's fair I should leave this family house I've lived in for 40 years just because of gulls have started to nest. So it's, um, it, it's I think the law needs to favour people more than the actual gulls. Tim, that's extraordinary. So you've actually... I mean, I think everyone would agree that you shouldn't have to move house, but but it's actually so bad that you've had to consider... Yeah. Just, just, well, just well, tell us. 
Yeah, it's it's the it's the noise. The, the uh, screeching of gars is in, is extraordinarily loud. It wakes us up at between four and five o'clock each summer summer morning. You can't sit outside in your backyard because of all the mess. Uh, it it's just it, it it makes living in the centre of Bath not much fun. And I've enjoyed that for years. My family's lived in this um, house for 40 years, but it's getting to the point when I'm not looking forward to the summer now. And indeed, the natural England just doesn't seem to care. It's just, well, if you don't like it, go. And I'm not going to leave this house because of the seagulls. And Vera, where next for the campaign? What more uh, do you, are you able to do? So we have um, achieved that at least Natural England is listening to us. We had a meeting with Natural England and the uh, DEFRA minister, Rebecca Powell. She was also actually very sympathetic. And I think uh, Natural England is at least starting to listen uh, and wants to work with the council in order to make the regime work, the new licensing regime. It has to be said, it didn't work at all. So um, a lot more tweaking of what is currently in place has to happen. What worries me most is even uh, if we tweak it even further, we, we won't have the same amount of control as we had before. And um, those who have been plagued by gals for more than the last two years, indeed, sort of 10, 20 years, and have already uh, thought that there were too many gals in the cities, and they see that the gal population is now even increasing uh, because of this new regime. And fair enough, Natural England had to do that because uh, the government was taken to court um, and lost that court case over um, a, um, a wildlife organization, uh, uh, w w which made it very difficult for uh, uh, Natural England not to change the licensing regime. But there has to be a better balance. And currently, we, we still have a long way to go. Tim and Vera, thank you for bringing the issue of seagulls to our constituency surgery today. Thank you very much. Good to talk to you both.